So, do you want to hear a story? Okay, I'll tell you a story. Come back with me way back, back to the very beginning, when humans were living wild and, and, and lost in the undergrowth, subject to great titanic powers that ruled our lives, the wind, the sea, the earth beneath us. But over time, as we looked out and we tried to make sense of our existence, new gods arrived, gods of craft and artifice and wheels and trade. And these new gods and those titans of old, they fought. They fought a great war that shook the cosmos. And in the end, it was the new gods that won. And they made themselves a home atop Mount Olympus. And from there, they looked down at this world that they had inherited. And they decided how to place their rule over us all. And chief among these gods was Zeus. And Zeus saw the humans that populated his planet. And he took care on them, but not too much. For he was, after all, a god who had achieved power, and he was not interested in sharing it by any means. He sent Prometheus, one of the titans who had actually fought on the god's side, to look after these human beings and to teach them all the skills that they might need. But he made sure he told Prometheus the one thing, the one thing, they could not have was a gift of fire. Now, Prometheus, he spent time walking the earth, helping us plow the fields, helping us build houses. And he came to care for his charges very deeply. So deeply, in fact, that he disobeyed Zeus. And he disobeyed him in lots of ways. And there are so many stories that could be told about that. But one thing that he did do, which is very important for this one, is he broke Zeus's most strict condition. And he did indeed give us the gift of fire. And so when Zeus looked down that evening as twilight fell across the world and he saw all the little sparks, all the little flames flickering as people warmed themselves and their children and cooked their food, then he was so angry. He was so incensed. And he flung himself down for Olympus and he took Prometheus and he placed him in chains on the side of a mountain where every day an eagle would fly and it would devour his liver. But Prometheus, being immortal, would live and his liver would heal overnight. And again, the eagle would come the next day and the pain would begin all over again. But Zeus was not finished. For he may have punished Prometheus, but he still had to make sure that he had humanity deep under his heel. So, he took a woman, the name of Pandora, and he sent her down from Olympus to walk among the people. And he gave her to carry with her a box, a simple box. He didn't tell her what was in it. And when she arrived, then all the people gathered round in wonder at this woman who had come from the home of their gods. And they all clamoured and cheered, and they all wanted to know what her message was, and they all wanted the honour of having her among them. And so, from among all the people stood forth the rich men and the powerful men, the fat, old men, who were so eager to cement their positions in society by being the one seen with the woman from the gods. And they built her a great house, a huge, splendid house of gold. And they treated her to feasts, and they made speeches in her honour, and they all gathered round, and Pandora sat in the middle of all this, wondering what on earth she had to say. And then, as the first night fell, and eventually the last of these men realised that he probably better not push his luck any further, and he left, she found herself alone. Alone under the night sky, in her big, echoing house, with the box. Now, as we'll see, a lot was said about Pandora later, but 
I don't know about you, but if it was me with that box, well, what would you do? You'd want to see what was in it. So, quietly, carefully, she stepped forward. She opened the box. And out hurled all the sickness and suffering and pain and hardship that is now found in the world. Every howl, every shriek, every illness, every hurt that might ever befall anyone erupted out of the box and through the windows and swept over the world like a wave. And the people then were not so happy with Pandora. And the praises stopped. And the great feasts faded away. And they cursed her then. And they left her alone in her great house. Pandora, damned by the fat, rich old men. Damned once. Twice damned as well. Damned also by the gods who set her up to fall. Sent her there, knowing that her curiosity would get the better of her. As it would for anyone. But not just twice damned. I say damned three times. For when there she was, left on her own, in the dark of the night, every night, listening to the howls of the sickly babies and the weeping of the aged and pained, with nothing but the shadows and the echoes for company, as she thought back on how this came to be, would she not have felt it impossible not to say to herself, I open the box. It's me. Damned three times by the fat, rich old men, by the gods themselves, and by her own conscience. But the story doesn't end there. Because as she sat there in the night, alone, in the silence, she heard a small voice, just a little voice saying, please, let me out too. She looked in horror. The voice was coming from the box. And at first she stopped her ears and would not listen to it, but it kept going. Please, let me out too. And all she could say was, no, no, I will not. She'd done so much already. But the voice carried on. Please, this is very important. You must let me out too. And in the end, maybe it was weakness, maybe it was conscience. Pandora listened. She went to the box and she said, why must I let you out? And the little voice said, I am hope. I will bring salvation and I will bring healing to all those who now suffer in the world. And without me, then the pain that has been wrought will indeed be unbearable. So Pandora had a choice. Pandora thought. Pandora leant forward. She opened the box. Thrice damned, once redeemed, once a redeemer. Maybe it all depends on how you tell the story. <laughs>